Hello and welcome to Recyclist. It's March 8th, 2024. I'm your host, Eric Provost, and this is your weekly roundup of all the biggest news stories in the world of waste, gas, and energy, presented by Diamond Scientific. First up, and as always, let's take a quick look at the stock market and five stocks worth shouting out this week within the world of waste, gas, and energy. As of March 8, 2024, Clean Energy Fuels Corps is holding pretty steady at $2.69. Arkea closed the day at $26. Waste Connections is down slightly to $166.80. Waste Management is up to $207.75. And Republic Services is also up slightly to $184.19. And as we move into the news, I'll let you know, folks, it's been an incredibly jam-packed week when it comes to legislation. But let's start off in New Mexico, where Governor Michelle Grisham recently signed House Bill 41 into law. It'll let the state's Environmental Improvement Board create rules around the carbon intensity of fuels. State Senator Mimi Stewart said, quote, decreasing air pollution and reducing greenhouse gas emissions, especially around transportation corridors, makes for healthier, thriving communities while addressing the serious impacts of climate change. Thanks to this legislation becoming law, I expect to see a measurable positive impact on both our health and our economy, and I am so proud of this legislature and Governor Grisham for taking yet another bold step forward toward our clean energy future, end quote. Up next, in Tennessee, lawmakers will soon consider a bill that could bring recycling to every home in the state, a $220 million undertaking that would be entirely paid for by the private sector companies whose packaging otherwise ends up in the state's brimming landfills. Tennessee currently ranks 48th in the nation for its limited amount of recycling, sending 900,000 pounds of packaging waste to landfills every year. That amounts to 690 pounds per household. The proposed Tennessee Waste Reduction and Recycling Act would require companies with gross revenues of $1 million or more to personally fund their own recycling. Now moving to the far northeast, the Maine Senate voted 20 to 12 in favor of the state's food scraps disposal ban, moving Maine one step closer to becoming the final New England state to require commercial and industrial scale food waste producers to donate their edible leftovers and recycle what remains. Senator Stacey Brenner, the Senate Chair of the Environmental and Natural Resources Committee, said, quote, This bill will divert food waste from landfills within the state of Maine. Currently, 40% of municipal waste in the state is food waste, end quote. Although approved by both chambers, the bill has not yet been funded and will require about $550,000 to $600,000 a year to pay the staff needed to regulate and monitor the program. And just a reminder, Recyclist is brought to you by Diamond Scientific, an industry leader in gas analysis, instrumentation, and solutions. Make sure to visit them online at diamondsci.com. That's diamondsci.com. Or call them at 321-223-7500. Now on with the news. Now, on the other side of the country, Washington could soon become the eighth state in the nation to ban mercury-containing fluorescent light bulbs. HB 1185 was passed by the state legislature, and the bill is now on its way to Governor Inslee for his signature. The move is expected to save state residents and businesses millions of dollars on utility bills while also reducing greenhouse gas emissions. Representative David Hackney said, quote, I recall as a youth finding a box of old fluorescent tubes behind a shop one day and my friends and I playing Star Wars lightsabers with them. Little did we know how dangerous those tubes really were, and it's good to know kids in the future won't be exposed to such situations, end quote. And while Washington is taking care of that, next door in Oregon, the country's most comprehensive right-to-repair legislation just passed the state house, receiving strong bipartisan support with 42 votes. State Bill 1596 will require manufacturing companies to make diagnostic tools, information, and replacement parts available to consumers and third-party repair shops so Oregonians can more affordably fix their products, such as phones, computers, and appliances. 
State Representative Courtney Neron said, quote, as many Oregonians are struggling to make ends meet, this legislation is an opportunity to give people more choice on how to repair their devices, creating pathways to saving consumers money and reducing the harmful environmental impacts of our increased reliance on technology and the waste we create when we cannot repair, end quote. And lastly, finally stepping away from state legislatures for a moment, the EPA has awarded the Shingle Springs Band of Miwok Native Americans a grant of over $650,000 funded by the Investing in America agenda to expand recycling infrastructure, support good paying jobs, and increase circular waste management on and off tribal land. The EPA Pacific Southwest Regional Administrator Martha Guzman said, quote, the EPA is proud to to award this grant, which will support Shingle Springs in their efforts to increase recycling rates, make significant strides in waste removal from tribal land, and create good-paying jobs for the tribal community. Together, we are making progress toward a circular economy that will better protect the environment and conserve resources." End quote. And that has been your Recyclist News Update for March 8, 2024, presented by Diamond Scientific. I've been your host, Eric Provost, and I'll see you back here next week for another episode of Recyclist. Thank you.